But we begin, as always, with three things investors ought to be thinking about right now. Markets ended the week mixed on rate hike fears and rising bond yields. Investors fear rates could go higher and stay there longer. EV makers Ford and Tesla hit some bumps in the road this week, but the industry is still moving forward. And we've been hearing a lot about a hard landing and a soft landing, but are we headed for no landing? On the Barron's Roundtable, my colleagues Ben Levison, Kristen Bellstrom, and Jack Howe. Uh, so, Ben, we have clearly moved into this area where good news is bad news for stocks. Nice economic uh, numbers coming out, but the stock market is not so happy about them. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point the stock market is starting to realize that they're wrong, that it's wrong about the Fed. I'm also worried that they really don't care still, that the investors are still putting it behind them. We really had two halves this weekend. Uh, this week, we had the stock market rally through a strong CPI number. Then by the end of the week, they gave back most of the gains, partially because we got a strong PPI, which has more of an impact. That's the producer price index, more of an impact on corporate earnings. And a lot of Fed governors coming out and saying 50 basis basis point rate hikes higher for longer and the market has finally started to reflect that in places like the Fed Fund's future market. So PPI trumps CPI. Keep that in mind, Jack. Got it. Got it. All right. uh, interestingly, of course, the bond market seems to have sniffed this out first. Yields have spiked. Bonds have gotten hit hard. Uh, is this those investors who some people think are the smarter ones than the stock jocks um, predicting that this was going to happen? Yeah, I think they were aware that this was starting to happen. So we saw um, junk bonds. They dropped about 2.3 percent uh, in February. And I think that's in anticipation of some of what's going on now, that there's just more risk for these uh, low rated companies than there was before. And then we have the two-year finally moving back up. It's only 0.1 percentage point away from its uh, high of this cycle. And so I think they were starting to see, yes, maybe we are going to have to take the Fed more seriously. Now, of course, we always say you shouldn't just look at one or two data points, and that is more true than ever in recent years. Uh, this week, you've got more data points coming out. What are you looking at? Well, we got a couple of big things. We're going to get earnings from retailers. This past week, we had retail sales numbers, the government's numbers come out, and now we're going to hear from the re uh, individual retailers like Walmart, like Home Depot, and companies like that. We're also going to get a PCE reading. That's the Fed's favorite inflation metric. And we're going to start to see how much is inflation really slowing at this point? Is it slowing enough? Or are we going to have to keep worrying about inflation going throughout the year? All righty. Thanks, Ben. So, Kristen, uh, the EV road or the road to an electric vehicle future turned a little bumpier this past week. Yeah, it was definitely bumpy, especially if you're Ford, uh, which announced that they are having to pause production of their F-150 electric truck. Um, this is because they had some battery problems, actually a fire in one of the batteries, um, which is not great news. This is, again, a company that lost $2 billion last year, so they really can't afford these kind of issues to come up. Um, now, it is good news, I think, if you're Ford's competitor, in this case Rivian, they're sort of head to head in the electric truck uh, maker industry. And, you know, Rivian stock actually went up about 8% the day that news came up. So, you know, good luck, good if you're them. And pretty cool looking trucks from Rivian, too. Uh, let's talk about one of the other hot EV makers or the hot EV maker, Tesla. It was a rough uh, week for Elon Musk. Yeah, Tesla, Tesla had a recall, about 360,000 cars. These are, it was related to their self-driving. So the self-driving has been a problem, you know, Tesla for, with Tesla throughout. And they were finding that these cars were doing things like they were not navigating like an intersection very well. They're having trouble when they had to shift speeds. Um, so, you know, Tesla is sort of saying this is no big deal. You know, we're going to push an update to these cars and we'll fix it. But, you know, I mean, the, the safety issues around this technology, which is really important to Tesla's business, you know, this raises more questions there. Absolutely. But some good news for Tesla on the charger front. Yeah, absolutely. Tesla has announced that they um, have made this agreement with the Biden administration to open up their charging network. They have a very big, reliable network. Um, so this really moves the future of EVs forward in the U.S. And, you know, for Tesla, this is more revenue. These are other cars that are going to be using their charging stations. Uh, although I would say the one thing for them is that, you know, this has been sort of something that Tesla user, Tesla owners are excited that they have this network. They're willing to pay the premium for the cars to use it. And now they have to share it. They have to stand in line. Uh, OK, so, Jack, help me out here. So it used to be optimists said we we're going to have a soft landing. Then the pessimists who were the smart ones said, no, it's going to be a hard landing. And now the optimists say we're actually going to have no landing. There are a lot of pilot metaphors right now. I've started wearing aviator glasses. Oh, yeah. read my analyst notes. <laughs> UBS says uh, a soft landing for the U.S. economy is still very much on the table. Uh, but we could have a hard landing recession induced by two or more uh, additional Fed rate hikes. Apollo Global sees a no landing scenario. That's where 
where inflation remains hot uh, and stocks are vulnerable. Wells Fargo sees market turbulence. Northern Trust, I don't know how anyone, anyone flies a plane in these things. Northern Trust sees a valuation headwind, and B of A Securities predicts inflationary and deflationary cross currents. I get a wind chill when I do this much Top Gun Maverick <laughs> cosplay, so you got to be careful. But I just want to break it down to you for you in simple aeronautical terms, Ben. Uh, some parts of the economy are cooling down, but not, is this upside down? Not services, okay? Rate hikes are taking a toll, but 95% of U.S. mortgages have fixed interest rates. So a lot of U.S. customers are okay right now. Um, you basically have to keep your flaps down or your tray <laughs> tables up, whichever way it goes. B of A recommends four ETFs for proper diversification right now. Invesco S&P equal weight, Pacer U.S. cash cows, Vanguard small cap value, and Pacer global cows dividend. Call sign on that last one, Jack. Grover, Cuckoo, <laughs> Orville, Wookie in fake pilot language. Is that pilot. a Chinese spy plane? Uh, I can't show you that. Oh, right okay. Right now, we'll talk after the show. All right, uh, Tom Cruise is calling though, and he does he does want to talk to you. All righty.